today's lesson. Uh, we're going to be working on applications. Probably one of, or really, the most difficult lesson in the unit. So what I'm doing is I have just a couple of examples for us to work through, trying to give us a maximum amount of time to work through the problem so that we can get through as many as possible. You know that there's there's absolutely no way I can do one of every kind. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of an overview and I tried to put quite a few different types of examples on the daily work so that you could work through quite a bit of that. So let's take a look at the very first one. Um, this, these applications actually are directly related to calculus. We have problems like this in calculus and what we're going to be doing is, is we're going to be working through the application problem until we get to the part where we do calculus and then we use a calculator. We won't do the calculus part, uh, but next year you would go through and do um, the calculus part. Several of these are what are called optimization problems and um, that's actually the second one. We'll talk about that one when we get to that one. So let's just work on the first one. So the first one, we have a rectangular parcel of land, has an area of 5,000 feet squared. A diagonal between opposite corners is measured to be 10 feet longer than one side of the parcel. What are the dimensions to the nearest foot? All right. So I like to draw a diagram. I think that's very helpful in these types of problems. I decided to label that X and that Y. Of course, it doesn't matter. You can choose whatever variables you want. And that's my diagonal. Uh, my diagonal is 10 feet longer than one side. I just chose it to be 10 feet longer than the side x. Okay, so that's one relationship that we have with the variables x and y. That is one particular relationship. So we're asked to find x and y, so we need a, actually a couple of different relationships. We also know about area. So let's go ahead and write that equation, the equation for area. We know x would be length times width. In this case, it's going to be x times y and that's going to equal 5,000. Okay, so that's my one equation. With these types of problems, I like to think of them as having um, a main equation and a helper equation. Depending on the type of problem would depend on what the main equation is. In this case, we really are just interested in the dimensions of the land, so it doesn't really matter which one we call the main one. Let's just call this one our main equation. We need a helper equation because we can't solve this you know, two variable equation with two variables. We can't do that. We need one variable. So we need a second equation to help us with another relationship between x and y. So this is one relationship between x and y, and this is another relationship between x and y. We need to capitalize on this relationship. So this is a, you know, rectangle, so we know that that's a, a right triangle. So why don't we use Pythagorean theorem? That would develop another relationship between x and y. So I know that x squared plus y squared is 10 plus x quantity squared. I know that that relationship is true. And so let's kind of multiply all that out, kind of get it cleaned up. Our job is going to be to decide which variable to solve for. You know, we just want one variable. If we have one variable, we can solve this equation, but we have two. So let's just kind of work through here. So I have x squared plus y squared. So we foil that out and we get 100 plus 20x plus x squared. As we work on this particular equation, we notice that the x squareds cancel out. They go away. So I have y squared equals 100 plus 20x. I'm going to solve for y just because there's, well, just and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to solve for y. There's just one y. There's one x, but I'm going to solve for y. So I would square root both sides. Now it's important to note that although algebraically this is true, we really can't have a negative side of a triangle or a rectangle, right? That, so this negative one is really, we, we can't use it. So we're going to use y as the positive root here. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to substitute it into my main equation so that I just have one variable in my main equation. So I'm going to have x and then times the square root of 100 plus 2x and that's going to equal 5,000. So that's my main equation and I'm down to one variable which is my goal and that's a 20x. I don't know, I, that poor little 20, I've just been leaving it off all day. Poor little 20. Sorry, little 20. Okay, it is a 20x. Okay. 
So um, are we okay so far? Now, if we were in calculus, we would use calculus techniques. We would continue with calculus techniques, but we are not. We're going to use some calculator techniques. And I'm going to solve that equation. Now, I like to use the grapher to solve. Um, some of you like using the equation solver. You just, whatever, whatever way you like to solve equations, just go for that way. Um, for me, the equation solver is confusing and I just have not gotten used to it, so I just kind of rely on the old faithful graphing part. So let's pull up our calculators, or I'm going to pull up mine if you would look at yours. All right, so I'm going to go to the grapher and I'm going to put, you know, 5,000 in Y1 and this expression in Y2. So let's do 5,000 in Y1. And then y2, I'm going to uh, put in this x times that root. So x and then root 100 plus 20x. Okay. So our window is going to need some work. I mean, look at that. We're at 5,000 for our y value. So I would go to my window and I would go through and I would change my y max to 5, let's see, if it's at 5,000, I'd go like 5,500. So 5,500. Since the y's are that big, the x's are probably going to be big, pretty big too. I would, I'm going to change my x max to like 100. No, let's do 200. Let's change the x max to 200. Hopefully that opened the window wide enough so I'm going to be able to see what's going on. So let's look at the graph and see if that works. Okay, it does. I can see everything just fine. So I'm going to use my, um, my calculator second calc to do the intersection. Now, ho hopefully we're aware that if I use this up down, I can toggle to the different kinds of equations. So. Uh, I would just want to toggle to the one that got me there the fastest. Usually there are the, those are the lines, but um, let's go. We're going to highlight that little area. Okay, so we're going to hit enter and then enter one more time and then enter. So there's our intersection, 106.08059 and then of course our y value is 5,000. So this is the dimension of that portion, the x portion of my rectangle. Um, I, they do want me to round to the nearest foot, so I am going to round this, but I don't want to round it until after I finish using it. So this value is stored in x. That's why we never, ever, ever store in x, because the calculator, that's the calculator's storage place. <laughs> we don't want to put something in there because the calculator is just going to erase it whenever it wants to. So um, I, if I get out of the screen, and I pr you know, hit X and enter, it's got that value stored so I can use it in other, you know, in other places. So there's my value 106. So what am I gonna do? I need to find the Y value. Now I certainly could go back to this and I could plug in that X value in here, and that, but that's fairly complex. Um, I would rather go to here. That seems much easier to use. You can use either one, of course, it's up to you. So let's um, go over here and let's solve for let's see let's solve for y so y is going to be 5000 over x alright so what we need to do is we need to do 5000 divided by uh, this x value and that gives us our y value the other side or dimension so again, we, they want us to go to the nearest foot. So our answer would be um, 106 feet by 47 feet. Those would be the dimensions. Okay, we okay with that one? Now on the next one, I'm not going to do calculator input just for um, speed sake, but I encourage you to use your calculator on this next one. This next one is a little bit more complicated. They're asking us to maximize the volume. This is the type of question in calculus we call an optimization problem. We are trying to maximize or minimize something. In this case, it happens to be volume. We want to maximize volume of this particular object. 
So let's work through that. So we have a cylinder. It's inscribed in a sphere with radius 5. So, okay, we're going to pretend this is in three dimensions, right? I'm drawing in two dimensions, so that would be my, my uh, sphere. My cylinder, we're just going to make it look like a rectangle because, you know, we're in two dimensions. So that, just pretend that's a cylinder. And the, rate, the sphere has a radius of 5. So from the center of the sphere to an edge, and that's the most convenient, a, a convenient edge to go to, that would be uh, 5. Let's move that in a different spot. OK, let's. OK, there we go. Um, they want us to express the volume as a function of x. And they are saying that x is the perpendicular distance from the center of the sphere to the top of the cylinder. So this would be x. OK, that's where x is what we want to use. And that's the object that has the x with it. Um, let's see what else they want. And then give the domain. OK. So we want the volume of the cylinder. We need to know all of our volume formulas. Hopefully we do. They're actually pretty straightforward, right? So if it's straight, like a cylinder or rectangular prism, it's just the area of the base times the height. If it comes to a point, like a cone or a pyramid, it's 1 third times the area of the base times the height. Right? And then, of course, you have your sphere, which is different and unusual. What is our volume for our sphere? Do we remember that? four-thirds pi r cubed. Okay, so that just three, really, to be honest, you just have three to memorize, three formulas. We should all know them. So we're looking, we're working on the cylinder, volume of a cylinder. So that's going to be the area of the base. The base of a cylinder is a circle. Right, so pi r squared and then height. Now, our job is going to be to turn this r and this h into x's. That's our job. We're told we need it in terms of x. So let's work on the radius first. Let's work on the radius. So hopefully you agree this little part right there would be the radius, right? That's the radius. And so I have a relationship between x and r. So I'm going to capitalize on that relationship so that I can um, use it to solve for r so I can get rid of r. So we have a Pythagorean relationship between these. So we would have x squared plus r squared equals 5 squared, which is 25. And I would solve for r squared, because that's what I want to get rid of. I need all just x's. So r squared is 25 minus x squared. And in fact, it's r squared that I wanted anyway. right? My formula has r squared in it. So I'm just going to take this r squared out, and I'm going to replace it with the 25 minus x squared. So volume is going to be pi. So let's take the r squared out, and let's put in 25 minus x squared. OK, my last task is to get rid of the h. So let's think about that. So the height of the cylinder, this height, see how this part of it is x? So what would the total height be? It would be 2x, right? Because this it, sa it says it's from the center and up, so it's 2x. Now, you can certainly leave the formula just like that. You don't have to distribute and combine like terms. In fact, it's easier to find the domain if you leave it like that. If you leave it factored, it's easier to find the domain. And that's probably one of the harder things for students is to find the domain. It's very confusing uh, for students to find the domain. So let's, let's talk about it. And really, this is all you have to do to find the domain. Now, we're, we know volume can't be negative and the sides can't be negative. We're really protecting against that. So I need to go, I know I'm going to go from 0. I know my x, that, that distance can't be exactly 0, but it could almost be 0. And isn't that what would cause this to be 0? Would be 0. OK, so we we'll to start at 0. Now, what would cause this to be 0? 5. That's my domain. So let's investigate why. Why is that my domain? Well, certainly we know we can't use negative numbers. Right, we can't use negative numbers. So what would happen if I used a 6? A 6 would be OK here. What would happen to here if I used a 6? It'd be negative, and we can't have it negative. Right, so the very easiest way to do domain is to think of it that way. 
to think of it as leave it factored and to think of it as what what would make each of those factors zero and then just make sure we understand what's going on and investigate. Does that make sense? So our domain is going to be zero to five. Here's our formula and there's our domain. At this point when they're asking us to maximize things we would turn to our calculator. You know next year we would use calculus but today we're going to use our calculator. So we would just type in this volume formula in our calculator and we know how to do a maximum, right? We've been doing that for a couple of years, a few years now. So I type that in and I do my max finder and what you should get, and I'm, I'm not going to go to the calculator just for time's sake, what you should get when you do your max finder is that x would be 2.887 and so how do I find my maximum volume? If I know my maximum x, how do I find my maximum volume? I would plug that in, right? And actually, it's kind of nicely just there for you, isn't it? When we found the maximum x value, it had a corresponding y value. Really, that corresponding y value is v, right? So that number is our maximum volume, the y value of the point that we just found because it's right x and v really. So that our maximum volume turns out to be 302.3 and we don't have any units on this problem so we're just going to leave them as numbers. Okay, how are we doing with that?